Christina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm here with Neat and Tangled, and I have a fun card to share with you featuring Chibitronic lights and also some fun techniques including stenciling and window die cutting. So let's get started and check it out. Here I've got the Neat and Tangled Journaling Alpha die set. This die set came out not too long ago, and I'm going to be using this to create a window in my card. Because we're going to be working with lights, I wanted to have a window that you could see through to the inside of the card so that the lights could shine through. So I'm going to be using these dies to create that effect. I'm lining them up here to make sure that they're nice and straight. And to ensure that they're perfectly straight, I'm actually going to take a ruler here. This is my Tim Holtz ruler. And I'll just go ahead and make sure that I line them up perfectly along the straight edge. And after I'm happy with how they're lined up, I'll just go ahead and take a piece of masking tape and apply it to the back side of the dies to make sure that they stay in place throughout the entire process of me die cutting. I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the word you. This is going to end up reading thank you. I'll just make sure that they're again lined up with the straight edge of the ruler and then I'll put the same masking tape on the back side of these as well. Again, just to hold them in place while I'm doing my die cutting. So I'll go ahead and lay these onto my card and put them through my die cutting machine. You can see I've got them taped down. And then once I remove the dies, I'm actually going to keep them in place on the tape just in case I need them again. I didn't end up needing them, but I thought it might be kind of handy to have them stay in place just in case because you never know. So I'll just go ahead and remove them off of the paper. And then you can see you're left with these beautiful words die cut into your paper. We're not going to be using the positive pieces. You could use them for another card, however. Instead, we're going to be using them to create this window. Now, you're also going to want to make sure you keep the negative pieces. We're going to need those as well for our card. And I ended up setting those aside. I'm also going to be taking this 6x6 piece of cardstock. This is 110 pound cardstock, which is the same cardstock I used for my card base. I'm going to be lining up these scored shape hearts, which are from Neat and Tangled as well. I'm going to be using these to create a stencil. And the stencil is going to help us create a beautiful background on our card. So I'm going to keep die cutting these hearts into this paper until this entire paper is covered with this pattern. Now this took quite a bit of time to do. However, I think it was really worth it because you can reuse the stencil over and over and over again, especially if you use a heavier weight cardstock like I did. So after I've die cut the entire stencil, you can see it creates this fun background of falling hearts scattered all over the place. I also created another card using the stencil along with the positive pieces of, as well. And that card will actually be coming up on my blog June 30th, so be sure to stop over at my blog to check it out. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and start using this stencil. I'm taking some masking tape and applying it not only to the back side of the card, but also making sure it's on the back side of the stencil. And that way it'll hold the stencil in place as I'm doing my ink blending. I'm going to ink blend with some Simon Says Stamp Hollyhock ink. Now I also have a piece of paper on the inside of this card because I was originally going to be doing this as a one layer card and have the lights on the inside. While that was a great idea, that wasn't going to work because the battery needs to be able to be held in place and I also did not want it to stay on all the time, so which meant I needed to add some dimension, and I'll explain all of that later on. However, I don't want to get distracted quite yet with that part. However, just pretend that I'm not using a full-size card and instead I'm using a panel because I'm going to end up cutting this down anyway. All right, so I'm going to remove the stencil just a little bit to let you see what we're creating. You can see that all of this ink blending through that stencil is creating these gorgeous hearts, which is so much fun. Now, I'm not ready to remove this yet, so I'm going to go ahead and apply that back down. And now I'm going to take some Versamark ink and start smooshing this all over my background stencil. Now I'm doing this because I want to do some heat embossing on these hearts. And also I wanted to mention that I have two embossing inks that I use. I use one ink for doing techniques like this where I'm smooshing things onto the paper directly, that kind of thing. And then I also have another embossing ink that I use just for stamping. And the one I use for stamping is Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. And this one again is the Versamark ink. Now I've got some clear hologram embossing powder from WOW. I love how beautiful this embossing powder is. It's got this gorgeous sparkle to it, and as you tip it in the light, the sparkle turns colors. It's absolutely stunning. So I'm going to cover this entire background with this embossing powder until I have it completely covered. Then I'm going to go ahead and heat set it. As you're heat embossing it, you'll be able to tell that the powder's melted because it'll have more of a shinier appearance rather than a matte appearance that you can see right now. It's kind of cloudy and matte looking. This will have a much more clear and shiny appearance as you're heat embossing. And then here you can see after it's all heat embossed, the gorgeous shimmer and shine that this embossing powder gives. It's absolutely beautiful. Now I wanted this card to have a tone-on-tone -tone coloring. 
because I did not want the background to be distracting. I wanted the sole focus to be on the lights and just have the background just give it a little bit of extra support and embellishing without it, again, being distracting. So I'm just taking some Rosy Cheeks ink from Simonson's Stamp and ink blending this all over the background of my card. Now, again, I did not think yet that I needed to have a thicker card and not a flat one layer card. So here you can see I've got a mask up at the top portion of the card. If you were creating a one layer card, you definitely would want to mask that top portion off so that way you didn't get ink on the back side of your card. However, this was unnecessary for me since I'm going to end up turning this into a card panel instead of a card base. After I've done that, I'm going to do the same process that I did on the card to the little negative portion of the O. I didn't end up doing this for the negative portion of the A because it was just so tiny it wasn't worth it. So I just colored it with the rosy cheeks ink and left it at that. However, since the O was big enough, I went ahead and did the stenciling and heat embossing. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add that to my card then after I've added this vellum. This vellum is going to be a little bit of a softer window for our card. So that way it's, the lights aren't too harsh and they have a little bit more of a glowing appearance. Here's that negative portion of the O. I'm just going to add some adhesive to the center of this O area. I'll just lay that down inside. And then I'm also going to take the negative of the A and apply that to the card as well. All right, so now it's time to start building our lights. I've got the Chibitronics kit here. It comes with all sorts of little goodies, including some copper tape, some binder clips, the lights, of course. The lights are stickers. There's also a couple of batteries. There's a little handbook that lets you try all sorts of different techniques. It talks about how to create Chibitronic circuits so that way you can have all sorts of fun with creating lights on your cards. Lots of really fun products in this kit. And I'll have a link over at the Neat and Tangled blog where you can find this kit. So I'm also going to show you here's the battery. The positive is on the top, the negative is on the bottom portion on the opposite side. I've also got one of the little lights. You can see the positive is up on the top flat area and the negative portion is on the pointy end. You're going to want to make sure you line these up with the copper tape leading to the positive and negative areas. This is going to allow your circuit to work. I'm adhering a piece of paper, this is just some printer paper, to the inside of my card. This is going to allow us to have a flap to close over top of the battery which will turn it on and off. I'm going to start running my copper tape. This is going to be our circuit for our lights that will connect us to the battery so that way our lights will be able to turn on. As I'm running this along my card, I'm ripping it at the areas where I'm making turns. This is going to allow me to have a nice flat air surface. You need to make sure that your tape is completely flat against your card. It doesn't have any wrinkles or areas that are raised up off of the card. You also need to make sure that when you're ripping the tape and reapplying it, that you're laying it right over top of the same tape that you just came from. This is going to make sure that your circuits are connected because if you have an area that isn't connected right, your lights won't work. So that was the negative circuit. We're going to stop right here because we don't want these to connect. I'm now going to take the positive circuit and I'm going to lay that on the inside of this paper. I'm going to run it over the top and then back to the back side. And now I'm going to run it down onto the card. Again, I'm not letting the negative portion touch the positive. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I stay away from that. I'll go ahead and start running this positive circuit all the way around the card and you want to make sure that you have it pretty close to the negative portion because you need to have the positive of the sticker be able to reach the positive tape and you also need to have the negative portion of the sticker reach the negative tape. So make sure that you don't have more than a quarter of an inch gap between your circuits. So after I've run all the circuits I'm going to apply my little stickers down and you can see how they light up. It's so much fun to watch this. You want to make sure that your stickers are taped down really well and they have adhesive on the back side so there's no need to apply glue or anything. You can see that positive flap ends up turning the lights on because as it touches the battery it lights up and then once it's not touching the battery the lights turn off which saves the battery and allows your card to have a lot more life. So here I'm adding some foam tape around the battery. This is going to hold it in place because again we don't want this to move. We need it to stay in exactly this spot so that way the, the lights will work all the time. Now I'm going to start running foam tape all the way around my card because I need this to be dimensional because the battery is a little bit thicker. And the other reason I'm adding this thickness of foam tape is because we want the battery, like I said, to be able to turn on and off. And if we had the foam tape at just one layer, or if we had the card at just one layer for that matter, the positive circuit would be smushed onto the battery and that would keep our battery lights running all the time. And hence that would have our batteries and lights running all the time. So we want to be able to have some dimension to keep our batteries from staying on all the time. 
So here I'm adding three layers of foam tape to go ahead and achieve that. So that way our battery lights will be able to be turned on when we want them and not be stuck on all the time. So I'm adding a red card base to the back side just to hold everything in. And there you can see our card is almost finished. I'm going to stamp a sentiment from the Neat and Tangled Awesome stamp set. This is going to finish off my sentiment, which will say, just had to say thank you. I'm going to be stamping this in some Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. And I've prepped the surface of my paper with an EK Success powder tool just to cut down on any static. I'll stamp that down. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss this with some Ranger White Embossing Powder. Stamping the sentiment onto some paper allows it to be able to achieve some dimension, but stamping it onto the vellum allows us to have some translucency, which allows us to see the rest of the sentiment much better than if it had been stamped on cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this vellum down into a little strip, and I'll also take my scissors and cut the ends just to make it a little shorter. Next, I'm going to take some cool tack clear foam tape. I'll just remove the backing and attach this right down into the center of the word U. All right, so now we need to create our button per se for our card. I'm taking that same Versamark ink that I used and this is a positive heart from the stencil that we created. I'm going to dunk it into some of that clear hologram embossing powder. And this is just gonna cover this with that same glitter and help it match the rest of our card. I've heat set it with my heat gun and now I'm taking that same Versamark ink and I'm smushing it right over top of that embossing that we just did. The reason I did this is because I want to make this a little bit more dimensional. So I'm taking some WOW Ultra High Clear Embossing Powder and covering this entire heart. You can see that the granules from this Ultra High Embossing Powder are much bigger than normal embossing powder granules. This is because this embossing powder creates a dimensional high gloss to your image, which is absolutely stunning. So I'm just melting this embossing powder until it's completely melted. And then I'll go ahead and let that cool a second. You want to make sure it's cool before you touch it because otherwise you will smudge the embossing powder. I'm going to go ahead and apply some adhesive on the back side of that heart. And then I'll go ahead and glue this right down into the area where the battery is on our card. And this is just going to allow people to know where to press on the card so that they can turn the lights on, which is really, really fun. So here's a close-up of how the card looks when you have it lit up in the dark. It is stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. And I think this actually would be a lot of fun for kids as well. So I hope you've enjoyed and got some inspiration on using Cheapytronic lights with your Neat and Tangled products. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. And head on over to the Neat and Tangled blog where you can get more information on this card, including still pictures and products used. If you enjoyed this video, here's another one you might like featuring Neat and Tangled products. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.